What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Bad Dog, back with another New York Yankee video. Happy Wednesday, everybody, April 20th. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. There'll be a lot more Yankee content coming forward on this channel this year, as long as the NBA playoffs, New York Giants draft next week. So it's going to be a lot of stuff going on on the channel. And I always appreciate you watching. Let's talk about the New York Yankees. Hey, listen, I'm going to do a video and I'm not going to sit here and scream about the Yankees. How about that? They beat the Detroit Tigers last night by a score of 4-2. to two. Some good things are done. Some bad things are done. But this is typical New York Yankee baseball. Obviously, they got a big break early on when Josh Donaldson hit a pop-up with the bases loaded. And the ball was dropped and the Yankees were able to play two runs. We're just going to start with the bad things first and get them out of the way, and then we'll start with the good things. The Yankees were terrible with runners in scoring position again last night. They were over their first 11, I believe, before DJ LeMahieu got the big hit in the ninth inning. We can always count on DJ to come up with a hit, can't we? And where did he go with it? He went to the opposite field. I mean, the Yankees, you know, good teams take the ball to the opposite field up the middle. That's what good hitters do. They spray the ball around the field. They don't try to pull everything out of the park. You know what I mean? They're not opening up their hips, flying open, dipping their shoulder, popping the ball up. It's not what good hitters do. They hit the ball where it's pitched, and they take what the pitcher gives them. And if the pitcher makes a mistake, then they can hit it out of the park. But not every pitch is meant to be hit for a home run, and it's something that a lot of these Yankee hitters need to understand. DJ LeMay, you understands that, but a big hit for him. It was the only hit the Yankees had all night with runners in scoring position. Again, they have struggled with that the entire season. Garrett Cole. He was horrible. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Garrett Cole was terrible last night. Threw almost 70 pitches in one and two-thirds innings. Walked five Tigers in an inning and two-thirds. Tied a career high in an inning and two-thirds. He walked five batters. So, not a good performance by our ace. Whoever since the spider tech thing came down, I saw this statistic in Pete's stream last night, has a 4.78 ERA since June of last year. That's not really going to get it done. We're going to need a lot more from Garrett Cole. The Yankees are going to try to contend for anything this year. We're going to need Garrett Cole to be the Garrett Cole that he was in Houston. The Garrett Cole that we paid $324 million to. I don't think he's this bad. I don't think you're going to see him pitch like, you know, the way he's pitched so far this year. I think he'll get better as the weather warms up. And I am not expecting Eric Cole to be terrible all year, but he was terrible last night. Now, I got the bad things out of the way. Let's talk about the good things. Aaron Hicks. Yes, that's right. I said it. Aaron Hicks. If somebody would have told me, hey, he's going to be the best player on the Yankees for the first couple weeks of the season, I would have said, you're crazy, man. He stinks. Like, he's been good. He's been good this year outside of the couple of times of the bases loaded where he grounded into a double play. I didn't know that drives me crazy. He's been very solid. He's been getting on base, been walking, he's hitting over 300. You know, he had a sacrifice fly last night, and it's those things that make me happy. The little things make me happy. Aaron Hicks getting the runner in from third with less than two outs with a sacrifice fly. Not everything needs to be a hit. Not everything needs to be a home run. Sacrifice flies may not be sexy, but, man, they're effective. And when I see a guy hit a sacrifice fly, it just makes me happy. Me. So I want to see more of that from Aaron Hicks. Obviously, he's done a good job in the leadoff spot for the Yankees. And I would like to see Aaron Boone actually continue to keep him there and keep the lineup somewhat similar. I'd also like to see DJ LeMay, who hitting second in this lineup behind Aaron Hicks, because if Aaron Hicks is leading off, he wants to steal some bases, you got a good man in DJ LeMay, who that you can hit and run with. It just makes sense. Aaron Hicks is supposedly a high on base percentage guy. He does see a lot of pitches. If he's getting on base, you want a guy behind him that can make contact. You want a guy that sit behind him that you can hit and run and you can do other things with. DJ LeMay, who makes sense hitting him second, then move everyone else down in the lineup. Um, the other thing I want to say, the Yankees played some small ball last night. They stole four bases. IKF had two steals. Aaron Hicks had a steal. I believe even Anthony Rizzo had a steal last night. So I like to see the Yankees moving around on the base paths. I mean, this is something they have to do. You guys got to manufacture runs because you're not scoring runs with the home runs. This is a team that is built on the home run. They have not hit many this year at all. Aaron Judge has struggled. Joey Gallo, I don't even know what to say at this point. His struggles are, I mean, they're not even, there's not even a word for what Joey Gallo uh, has done this year. Another really great performance last night was Clark Schmidt. I mean, after Garrett Cole struggled mightily through the first inning and two thirds, Garrett, or I'm sorry, Clark Schmidt came in there and was absolutely 
lights out. He's a very good this year. Maybe the Yankees actually have something. We've heard about Clark Schmidt and Davey Garcia for a couple of years now. Clark Schmidt has come up. He has pitched very well this season. Hopefully that can continue. Lord knows the Yankees need some good young arms. We haven't had good young arms in a long time in this team. I've mentioned it before. The only two starting pitchers that I've ever seen that were any good that came up through our system in my lifetime are Gidry and Pettit. So it would be nice to have a guy like Clark Schmidt come out there and perform. Maybe he has earned, uh, a, maybe he will earn a starting spot in the rotation by the end of the year. You want to see Luis Severino continue to be healthy. Obviously, Sevy could be a big part of what they do. Nestor Cortez was lights out in Baltimore. Pitching staff certainly has been ahead of the hitters so far this year. But listen, you'll take any win you can get. And like I said, the Yankees got a big break early on. For whatever reason, the Tigers were unable to field the ball last night. I know the weather was kind of tricky. It was very windy. It's very cold. Trust me, the weather's not much different here in upstate New York as it is in Detroit. It's cold. It's crappy. It's garbage. Should be a little bit warmer by the end of April, but April's a bipolar month as far as weather goes. It could be 82 degrees. It could be 28 degrees. You really never know what you're going to get um, in April. But I do like what the Yankees did last night. You take any one you can get because they have struggled also, the AL East has struggled as a whole. But the AL East is going to be really good. Now, granted, it's early. So I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, Aaron Hicks is an MVP. Oh, you got to cut Garrett Cole. Oh, well, Joey Gallo stinks. I'm not, Joey Gallo stinks no matter if it's one game, 10 games, 100 games. Why is Joey Gallo even on this team? Joey Gallo is, is, is an empty at bat. I mean, the guy strikes out every time, struck out four times. Why is he even in the lineup? Why is he even in the lineup? Can we do something else? Um, with the lineup to, to get Gallo out of there, or at least move Gallo down in the order. But uh, again, you know, I would like to see Hicks continue to lead off. I would like to see DJ hit second. Then I think you could use Judge third, Rizzo fourth, Stanton fifth. You want to start going righty, lefty, righty at that point. I, I think that would be a pretty good lineup. Whatever Boone does in the lineup, I would just like to see it be consistent. I think part of the issue with the Yankee offense, and I'm not just blaming it that because they are what they are. They're a veteran group, and they do, you know, they are scoring runs on home runs. At least that's what they try to do. It'd probably be better for the batters if they came to the park every day or most days and knew where they were hitting in the lineup. I just feel like they'd have a better approach at the plate. Again, I've talked about how baseball is situational, and yes, it is. But if I'm a ball player and I know, hey, I'm coming to the ballpark, and 90% of the time I'm going to be hitting second, or 90% of the time I'm going to be hitting sixth, at least I know where I'm going to be consistently in that lineup. And I think it just gives you a better mindset and a better approach. Hey, I'm going to be hitting sixth today. Hey, I'm going to be, you know, I know I'm hitting sixth. As, in, as opposed to like they did with Aaron Hicks, he hits first, he hits eighth, he hits sixth, he hits fourth, he hits third. Just... Put them in a spot, Boone, and let them stay there. And if somebody's red hot, keep them in the lineup regardless of the situation. Stop resting guys 10 games into the season. This doesn't make any sense, okay? I don't understand. Well, we got to hold them for the long haul. They, they, this is why the things with resting the players drive me crazy. Oh, it's a long season. We got to keep them fresh for September. Well, if you fall off in April, May, and June, because you're resting players, you're blowing games of the Orioles that you shouldn't be losing because you have your best players on the bench. September may not matter. And then what do you do? Oh, good. Well, we're six games out of the wild card with 14 to play. But thank God we we rested, uh, you know, Aaron Judge on April 12th or whatever. Come on, man. You, you can't do that. One of the biggest issues that I have with Aaron Boone is that he plays for the next day. Stop playing for the next day. Play to win today. You know, Mariano Duncan said in 96, we play today, we win today. That's it. That's what you do. You try to win today. You worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. But you try to win every game on that day. Some days, maybe you're down nine to nothing or you're up nine to nothing and you can rest your guys at that point. But stop sitting them out at the beginning of April trying to keep them fresh for September when you don't know what September is going to bring. That drives me insane. Anyway, that's all I got in this video, guys and girls. As always, thank you for watching. One last time, if you made it this far, you're always a trooper to make it through one of my videos. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, share it with a Yankee fan, and let's go Yankees. It's the Bad Diggity Dizzle, and I'm out. Peace.